content. You need to produce content. And it's great if you have 19 people like Gary Vee. But I mean, I'm, for instance, for me and my business, I don't need to produce content to make more money. Right. We have business partner relationships that we deliver a very simple content to in person, not online. Mm -hmm. And we get business. So it's more B2B than B2C. Mm -hmm. Um, what would be your record? So two, two things, uh, let me, let me actually jump back into this. First of all, I love the concept of becoming micro famous mm -hmm. and I have not read your book yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, from what I hear about it right off, it's beautiful right behind you, by the way, I got to do that for my book right behind me. It's super <laughs> sexy. Um, so if I was a book, I would go kiss your book right now. Um, <laughs> it looks awesome. Love the light bulb. And maybe I use that in one of my brands to a light bulb. But um, I find that so many people, uh, and what it means to me right off the bat is in your niche, in your world, like getting famous in your world to deliver the content. Because I think that so many people are trying to do big and macro, yeah. Yeah. but they're not honing in on and i don't know this is your book but i'm guessing they're not honing in on very specific clientele that will sign a contract sign a deal so they can deliver a product am yeah, i am you're, i going you're the right direction right yeah because we're, we're trying to build we've 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 been seduced into thinking that the key to success is to build that hundred thousand or that million subscriber audience on instagram and youtube and places like that not realizing that look if you're if you're the average entrepreneur and you want to live a good lifestyle, you can make seven figures a year off of an audience of like 10,000 people. If you're selling the right thing, like a high ticket service or offer or live events or coaching or consulting or whatever it is, as long as it's, you know, as long as it's not like a hundred bucks, it's not, it's not a low ticket thing. Um, you can make, you know, a seven figure business and a very comfortable, beautiful life, simple, profitable business off of a, a very small audience. What that gives you, like when you, when you release the pressure when you when you get when you step out of that that myth of I have to reach the maximum number of people possible and you go okay let's say I only needed to reach 10,000 people who are the right 10,000 people okay let's get that dialed in who are the right people great now I know that what that gives you the ability to do is then figure out what's my message to just those 10,000 people that's going to resonate deeply with them that nobody else really cares about and it keeps you from getting sucked into that trap that I see happen a lot. And I know you see it too, which is everybody posting the same stuff that Gary Vee and Grant Cardone and those guys post. They're just copycatting them. All they're doing is reinforcing them. They're just reinforcing Gary Vee. They're just reinforcing his belief system, his point of view. And they're not reaching, you know, they're, they're chasing the same thing that he has. And the very fact that they're posting like the same type of content that he is guarantees them that they're not going to overtake him. You're not going to beat him at Gary. You're not going to beat Gary V at being Gary V. You're not going to out hustle the hustle master, right? You're not going to do it. And if you, if you let go of the idea that you need to reach a million people to build your business correctly, then you can go, well, now what's my message that only the right 10,000 people are going to care deeply about? And you can drill down super deep. So I'll give you an example. One of my friends and clients I started the podcast with years ago, he's in the real estate space, and I have a, a ton of friends, and that was my, where my first podcast was. My first podcast, though, had like this mainstream audience in the real estate space. We had all the beginner people you know, following our show. But that other show that I helped him start had a super niche audience where like the total, the total group of people that can afford his service in a given year are like ten to 12,000 people. But that podcast ends up getting 10,000 downloads a month in that space, Right. And builds this multi six figure coaching consulting business in a couple of years when he's not on social media hardly ever. We had a tiny email list, right? And he's not like he's an extrovert in person, but not online. Like he's he's a family guy. Like he wants to he wants to run his business and hang on that with his family. He doesn't have, want to hang around on on Instagram taking selfies. And that to me, that's what most of us will end up wanting in the end. Now you've got your people like Gary Vee that want to build a billion dollar company and buy the jets. That's awesome. But that, if that's not you and that's not me either then you've got to change the definition of what success is and, and start looking at how do I reach the exact right people instead of trying to reach everybody because it's, it's diluting your message and it's actually hurting your ability to reach anyone. And that's my perspective. So, so I love that. And I find that so many, I find a lot of people go after that big lifestyle mm -hmm. when the only reason they want to go after is because they just don't have it and they don't understand it. 
Mm -hmm. And if they were to have the yacht and the plane, it's not about having those nice things. It's about paying for the 20 person crew on the yacht or the (laughs) full time or or the gas for the plane. Yeah. Or like, it's, it's insane. Like I rode on a, on a, on a private G4, G6 or whatever it is from LA, one of my friends to um, one of my mentors to Palm beach. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's like, it was like 40 grand or something like that. Right. For like Mm -hmm. six of us. I'm like, we could have like, I mean, like, it's crazy for me is, is like how I spend money. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't need those luxuries in my life. That doesn't fulfill yeah. me. Yeah. What fulfills me is the ability to spend time with other humans. Like my last birthday, I was 39 in October and people are like, what should I get you? And I go, nothing. I go, if you want something, take me out to lunch. Like, like yeah. give me your time because I find that I don't want anything more. I have too much stuff. Um, I have schools full of stuff and I have like, like, it's just crazy. I just want to spend time, quality time with humans that I love to learn from or love to like support or grow or just good friends. Yeah, me too. Um, but people get away from this, like they build, they try to build this big thing and then they're like, holy crap. Now I have like my overhead every month. I'm, you know, it's like 150,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. Like not even, it'd be even more. It's like probably 160, 170. Uh, so I'm spending 170,000 a month. Like, and people don't understand that you got to make more than 170,000 a month to spend 170,000 a month. <laughs> yes, and I'm just, that I'm, is traditionally I'm, how that works. Unless you're the U.S. government, and then all bets are off. But yeah, <laughs> very true. So, so I, I love what you're saying about the micro famous, about the niche, like niche in there. Um, because when we go B to B, it's very nichey. Um, yeah, we have private schools that deal with a very specific clientele mm-hmm. that need a very specific outcome that, you know, we, we know how to get them and, or my brain is here, whatever else we do. So it's, I love how you're helping serve people and on your website, get, get microfamous.com. People can go on there and, and download uh, a copy of the book. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't beat that. <laughs> well, and I think that's like, as I've gotten clearer, you know, there's, I, it, it's just interesting how it breaks down into like introverts versus extroverts because extroverts are okay and even energized by having a lot of, um, a lot of relationships in their lives, right? And so you end up, you know, like that kind of feeds into your whether you're in business, whether you're an executive, whether you're running a nonprofit, whatever it is, it kind of like your personality and what you get energy from affects everything. And I think introverts, like you talk about like that rock star lifestyle, I don't know the most introverts would even enjoy that lifestyle very much. You know, the yacht, the, the, the private jet, like you're talking, you know, I remember sitting in a, a, like a hotel suite one time after an event and the next guy over was having a discussion with a friend of his about debating on taking his part-time private pli- uh, plane pli- uh, client, excuse me, his, the, the pilot of his private plane. He was debating on whether to move him from part-time to full-time. That was one of my very first experiences, like after I started my agency, was sitting in on that conversation. I'm like, this is the wildest thing. Like, how in the world did I end up here? Like, how am I ha- like, in, in, like in a room with people like this having this conversation? But you don't realize... Like to have the yacht, to have the jet, to have all this stuff, to have the office full of people that you go into every day, that's hundreds and hundreds of of relationships in that kind of middle of the target. Like they're not really in the circle of trust. They're not your closest friends, but they're around you all the time every day. That is not necessarily a fun thing for introverts. Like that is an energy drain. You know, so guys like Richard Branson, guys like Tony Robbins, they thrive on that because they get more energy back in from all of those social interactions throughout the day. Great, right? Introverts don't. Introverts, that every single one of those little interactions throughout the day is a drain that we have to go spend alone time to recover from. And so for me, like what somebody asked me a really good question one time, she just asked me like, hey, how many people do you want like around you on an average day? And I'm like, a handful, maybe, you know, definitely less than 10. And that was a big light bulb for me. You know, that, that affects how many calls I do a day. It affects my daily schedule. It affects the fact that I don't run an office with people. All my team is virtual. Like I just kind of built a life around me and I'm way happier once I figured that out. 
Um, and I think introverts get caught up sometimes because of the social media game, you know, following these people on social media and they get into that rat race of trying to make themselves appear to be a rock star, thinking that that's what they need to do to grow their business or to sell stuff online. And uh, that may be true and it may work for extroverts, but it burns the introverts out. And even if they, even if it worked for them, it wouldn't work for very long, if that makes sense. Like they'd burn out of it. I find a lot of people are very vision driven of what they want the outcome to be versus who they get to be or how they get to operate on a daily basis. And what I mean by that is a lot of people are like, I want the jet. I want the big house. I want this. I want that. And I'm like, well, if you want to go travel the world, go work for a cruise line and go travel the world. Right. Or go work, go, you know, get a job on a jet. Like, but they're like, no, I want to own the jet. I'm like, who wants to own a jet? Like, I don't want to own a jet and I like some nice stuff. But <laughs> so say, do you know anyone that's owned a jet? Have you talked to them about all their problems? Yeah. See, that's the problem is, is they, they have the, like a lot of my kids in, in Liberty city for instance, they're like seeing a rap video and they're like, that looks super cool. And I'm like, okay, just to let you know, when you make a million bucks minus taxes, you leave with less than a million. So you're not really making a million. And when you sign a recording studio contract, it's for multiple multiple albums it's for Mm -hmm. multiple time and you don't just get paid they pay themselves first and like i fill people in on this stuff and they're like hold on are you serious and i'm like billionaires hire millionaires it's like nfl like you make a couple hundred thousand a year to a couple million a year whatever Mm -hmm. and you work for a billionaire Mm -hmm. like so obviously they're going to win in contracts like get this (laughs) you know what I what I love about yeah, you're not like, going to win of, in your contract when you're when your opponent on the other side is a billionaire. Yeah. No, no. I mean, <laughs> you just try to get a little win win, right? Like out yeah. of it, and you get a better contract. And you know, I so my partner Brittany is is very she can be extrovert, but she's very introvert most of the time. Mm-hmm. And what's so amazing about finding a partner like that is same with Jen too. Um, it, what's so amazing is is they like to stay at you know, in an office, in a home, in a, like, and they're focused, they can yeah. laser focus. Yep. And they're like, you go out and do your thing. We're going to crush it in here. Mm-hmm. And so what, what the biggest challenge for me is back in the day, I used to say, well, come out with me to an event. And now it's like, hold on, we're two different positions, two different, you know, um, uh, frameworks of mind and everything else. And yep. I'm like, you do yours. I'm going to go do mine. I'm going to be really super successful. What I do and you mm-hmm. smash it where you're doing it. And so it's interesting to look at that now when I'm building, when I invite partners in, like Michael, super introvert, one of my partners, he used to run a jail and now he runs our voc rehab side of it and and Mm -hmm. HR, but he, he used to run a jail. So he used to sit there and crunch numbers and deal with individual people, Mm -hmm. but now he's getting up in front of people and speaking and he likes that side of it a little bit, but then he loves what he gets to do by himself. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's a misconception in itself about introverts. I mean, even... Uh, even one of the books that got popular about introverts a few a few years back was talking about how how the you know the quiet and shy can you know step out and lead. Uh, in, that's not what makes someone an introvert. You know, quiet and shy a lot of times has more to do with maybe some insecurities and things like that that could be resolved. But even if you get all that stuff out of the way and you're no longer quiet and shy, and I'm not a quiet or shy person, I never was. I'm still an introvert because where it's where I get my energy from. My energy comes from recharging alone, and then I go out and when I interact with people, that expends my energy. Period. Like that's end of story. That's that's the only thing that makes me an introvert. And yeah, I had to figure out the hard way. Like, yeah, I can pretend for a while. Like I can go to an event and I can work eight, 10, 12 hours. I can do all the stuff. I can schmooze and I can go to the party and the after party and the after party about once. And then I need to go and then I'm out of commission for like three or four days, or I can go and I can speak and not do the extra obligations. And I love speaking. Like I'll crawl over broken glass to speak to an audience. Like I love it. But then I need to go take a nap afterwards. So it's a, to me, it's all about like understanding your energy dynamics. And like you've done, like you've partnered with people and you've brought people into your life that are complementary. And you figured out you can't expect them to be just like you because they're not. And I think that's where introverts get caught up a lot of times is we try to pressure ourselves to be more extroverted, thinking that's the answer. It's like, that's not the answer. The answer is just build a system around you that allows you to be yourself. You know, whether it's partnering with people that are more extroverted, whether it's, you know, getting interviewed on podcasts by people who are extroverted, you know, just that there's always a way around it, but you don't have to be something that you're not in order to succeed. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if I could go back, you know, like if I was working with kids, like in high school age, that's probably the one thing I'd try to drill into them is, you know, it doesn't matter what your mindset is. It doesn't matter who you are as a person. It doesn't matter what your strengths and weaknesses are. 